Hello, my bread friends. It's been about a week or two since my last video. And one of you, Joanna, I think it is, wanted to see brioche. And I wasn't really planning on making a video today. I wasn't planning on baking today, but I suddenly remembered that I wanted to make more croutons. And I'm, you're thinking, brioche croutons. Okay, well, it turns out that brioche makes the most amazing croutons. Then I thought I invited my friend over for hamburgers tonight. I need hamburger buns. And that went on from there. And so now what I'm going to do, I've made all three bread machines worth of brioche dough. Two of the doughs are ready. One of them you'll hear beep any second now while we're doing this. I want you to know that this is an incredibly rich, rich, rich dough. Each recipe has four eggs and almost two sticks of butter. So my husband, my videographer is going to get in close to, so you can see how gooey and um, it's not wet, but it's up there's bread machine number three, um, how buttery, buttery it is. So I don't typically braid this bread. I just shape it into a loaf and put it into a loaf pan, but also hamburger buns. And we'll do that in a minute. So I'm going to dump the lump of dough. See how it just flies out and look at the bread pan too. See how it's very, there's lots of greasy, buttery, yummy goodness in there. So I have a lot of flour. I'm going to put some on my hands. I'm just going to, I'm not really kneading it. I'm just barely touching it if you want to know the truth. It's just very, uh, it's very light, like it's heavy, but it's light. I know that didn't make any sense, but I'm just kind of shaping it to fit my loaf pan, which is a nine by five, nine inch by five inch loaf pan. And I just kind of plop it in there And that's it. And I'm gonna do the same thing with number two. <laughs> Make sure the paddles didn't stick. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I think I look look how wet the counter is from from the butter. So don't be afraid to use a little flour on your counter. So again, I'm just Kind of shaping it and plop it in. I have to wash my hands a little bit really fast. My husband can zero in on that dough another time. Well, I very quickly use dishwashing detergent to get the butter off my hands. I'm still talking and he's still doing that. Okay, so we're gonna walk over to the oven the oven rack down a little lower than than the middle because these breads rise really high or sometimes they do so if you've ever seen my videos you know I turn on my oven to 170 for one minute that one minute gives just enough heat to help the bread rise if you let your bread rise on your counter, that will work as long as your kitchen isn't cold. Um, I just always do it this way because it works. It always works. It raises perfectly. I always set my timer for 45 minutes. If it isn't broken, don't fix it, you know, kind of a thing. You're not preheating the oven all the way to 170. You are just turning it to the lowest temperature for the one minute, we've got 24 seconds left. Yes, I can fill. My husband's handing me the, the dough as he was camera as he was filming, which is pretty good. Um, as soon as the timer goes off, 10 more seconds, I'm gonna pop these in, set my timer for 45 minutes, and it's a set it and forget it until then, and then I bake. I'm going to use, oh, there it is. So I'm gonna cancel my timer. Don't forget to set the timer, and I'm gonna cancel the oven. If you forget to set your timer for that one minute, your oven will get too hot, 
and you will kill the yeast. You don't want it that hot. Now, if you proof on the counter, yes, you should cover your dough. There's no draft in the oven and it's not gonna get cold because it's in a warm oven. So I do not cover it and that eliminates the whole need for a towel or plastic wrap or something like that. So I'm gonna set this for 45 minutes. And we're gonna go back over to the workbench. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to just get this last dough out. And with this one, I know that's a lot of flour. But it's sticking, that's why. Oop. Paddles came out on that one. So, with this one, I'm going to make hamburger buns. And I need to be able to handle this, so I'm going to get even more flour on it. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay. So, depending on the size of my hamburgers, and I tend to make them on the big side, um, I, you get either get eight or ten hamburger buns, and it really just depends on how big you want to make them. So I'm going to call it eight. Now, usually I would maybe weigh the dough and divide it by eight grams, you know, by eight and see how many grams per, but I'm kind of feeling lazy about that today. So I'm not going to. I don't make my hamburgers uniform. I'm not going to make my buns uniform. If you want to, you can. And I have eight. So now I'm just going to shape them into hamburger buns. A lot of people would roll into a ball. I can't do it. I've seen it on videos. I, I just can't do it. So what I do is I just Tuck under, tuck under, tuck under, tuck under. Press the seam together. Make it sort of kind of into a ball. Put it on a cookie sheet and smash. Not, not like a pancake, but just smash. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. You can see, look at the grease on my hands. Do not let that fool you. It's do not let that make you worry. I should say that you did something wrong with the recipe. It's just a very, very buttery recipe. And it bakes up perfectly. And I like this best for hamburger buns. Sometimes they come out almost where I don't have to do as much. Okay, and smash. <laughs> uh, this one may be a little smaller, but that's okay. There will be a smaller hamburger. I'm going to finish these up, and I'll get back to you after they've risen. I'm going to do the same thing with um, the rising 45 minutes, but of course they take less time to bake. So the beautiful brioches have risen like crazy, actually. They look beautiful. I have made egg wash, which is just one beaten egg with a splash of water. Some people say a teaspoon of water. Some people say a tablespoon. I just got to go bloop, bloop from the faucet with my hand. So I'm going to egg wash these. I always use a silicone brush. I started out using bristly brushes and ended up deflating my precious dough. So now I just, and I just barely glide the brush. I have the oven preheating to 350 and that's what I'm going to bake them at. It should take around 30 minutes to an internal temperature of 190 to 200 degrees. Uh, while I'm finishing this, I want to talk to you about some weird and crazy variations you can do with this brioche dough. It is almost cake worthy as it is because it's so rich, but I have done some super crazy things, which my husband thinks are abominations, 
and probably some of you will also, but I have in the dough in the bread machine, I have added chopped candy corn, <laughs> chocolate chips. Um, I'm trying to think maybe raisins. I don't know. I don't usually put cinnamon and brioche, but anyway, you can do weirdo things. That's up to you. These are just plain brioche and these two are going to be what I call sacrificial breads or sacrificial brioches because Tomorrow or late tonight, whenever I have a chance to film it, I'm going to cut the cooled bread into cubes and I'm going to make croutons and I'm going to show you how to make the most glorious, delicious, decadent croutons for your summer salads. We're eating a lot of salads now, or at least we are in Southern California where it's nice and warm here and I can't, just salad without crouton is, I just, not very excited about that. So homemade croutons are a thing that I've been making lately. Um, I also can't really buy croutons because I'm allergic to nuts and a lot of the boxes have a nut warning. So I have to make my own, but that's okay. I like it. So I will show you what these look like after they're baked. So while we're waiting for the ovens to preheat, my hamburger buns are done rising. So now I'm going to Give those a quick egg wash and sprinkle them with the iconic, ever popular sesame seeds because I like hamburger buns with sesame seeds. You could put poppy seeds, you could put everything bagel seasoning on them. You can tell that I didn't cut these so that they all were the same size, but I don't care because my hamburgers are never all the same size. It does not really matter. All right, did I miss? Yep. Thank you, honey. Everybody say hi to Neil as you're watching this. That was, did you just wave to them? Okay, yeah, he's a dork. Should I be like Emeril Lagasse? Bam! <laughs> yep, I'm a weirdo. And no, they're not all perfect looking. I don't care. I'm not making these for a contest. Let's see which buns are prettier. They will taste divine. And they will actually look beautiful when they are baked doesn't really matter to me if they are not perfect. Some of you are a little more particular about that. Um, I don't happen to be, except for I want mine well coated with sesame seeds, don't I? I know, I have sesame seeds flying everywhere. Okay, the oven is preheating. When everything is out of the oven, I will show you how everything turned out. And we're back. I know we didn't go anywhere on your screen, but on my screen, I've had about an hour or 45 minutes since I last talked to you. So here are the buns. Yes, I know they're not all different shapes, but they will all taste delicious. I can't cut one open yet because they are too, um, too hot, but you can see kind of what the inside will look like. And the same thing with the bread. I can't quite unmold it. I'll unmold it after about 10 minutes of cooling on the rack and then before I make the croutons with these two breads, I will show you what the crumb looks like. And um, since I have you as a captive audience, I thought I might show you how I make turkey burgers. I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but I'm just gonna kind of give you a little hint. I've chopped up one pretty large purple onion and I have three one pound packages of ground turkey. I never buy the extra lean, it's just gross. And, um, oh, I have to wash my hands because I just touched that turkey, hang on. Um, so then into that mixture goes, and this is basically my mom's recipe. No, I don't have measurements, I'm sorry. I just kind of go with it, so. Using a lot of ketchup. 
Yes, the fart noise. And a couple of eggs, hopefully here. Hopefully I don't get shell in here. Slippery, slidey eggs. Ah, no shell. And, oh, I gotta watch my hands again. Should have uh, pre-measured. It was just kind of a last minute idea to show this to you. And a lot of Lowry Season Salt. Turkey needs a lot more seasoning than hamburger meat. That's probably about right. Again, I don't measure it. Now, these are the breadcrumbs I use, Italian style breadcrumbs. I'm not going to put the breadcrumbs in yet because, well, actually, it's 522. I guess I could because it's for dinner tonight. I guess I am gonna put in the breadcrumbs, but first I need to mix this up. But I can start by putting a bunch in. And my most unfavorite thing, yuck, watch off. No jewelry except for that, Blah, yuckers. So I'm gonna have my husband turn off the video at this point. I think you have the general idea and this isn't supposed to be a video about making turkey burgers, but since I was starting to get dinner ready, I just kind of thought it might be fun to show you what I do. And the only other ingredient that would go in here again is just more breadcrumbs. So I'll mix it really well and then just kind of see it's a little soft still. It needs, it's kind of mushy, so it needs more breadcrumbs. Um, sometimes we barbecue these. Sometimes I just bake them in the oven and I make meatballs exactly the same way, but then I would serve meatballs with my sauce, spaghetti sauce. So, and that would also be homemade. So that's about it. I'm gonna say goodbye to you with yucky turkey burger hands. <laughs> So my husband has abandoned ship. Nah, he's just in the other room, but he didn't need him for this. So here are the two loaves of brioche, all baked and just cooling on this rack. I never slice bread until it's been cooling for two to three hours. As far as the hamburger buns go, they are still warmish, but you know, they're ready to go anytime we're having dinner. They've cooled enough that they will split open or cut open just perfectly. And since I made the turkey burgers in front of you, <laughs> you can see that I had to make three meatballs or else I would have taken out another foil tray. I'm just gonna bake these. Um, we often barbecue, we live in Southern California and my husband is the king of barbecue and he does an es excellent job at everything he barbecues, but sometimes I need to give him the night off. So they taste really good baked. And uh, these are about to go in the oven because dinner is in about half an hour. Um, I will post again with, continue this video, I should say, when I show you how to make the croutons. All right, I just, uh, we're about to eat dinner, so I just cut one of the hamburger buns in half. And you can see the yummy, yummy crumb. I've cut the brioche open, or one of them, and that is what it looks like on the inside, pretty similar to the hamburger bun. Uh, right now I'm going to kind of cube this and put it in big foil pans to kind of let it dry out a little bit overnight. And then tomorrow I will make croutons and I will show you how to do that. So one whole loaf of bread fit in this size foil pan and another loaf of bread fit in the other size foil pan. And while I have this cut apart, I just want to show you how spongy. It's like the lightest, fluffiest. I mean, look at that. Oh, this is such a tasty bread. I mean, come on. Four eggs and almost two sticks of butter. This recipe is brioche-tastic. <laughs> anyway, tomorrow I will show you how to make this into croutons, but right now I'm just going to let these sit out. I'll just cover it with like a paper towel or something because I want air to be able to get in and it'll help if they're a little bit dry. Yummy. Good morning. Well, I know this is the same video to you, but to me it's a whole different part of the video. 
the next day. I'm getting ready to go to the gym for the first time since January of 2020. So I'm dressed for the gym, no apron, the hair is down. I know I look different, but today we are continuing our brioche adventure with making croutons. So after I showed you the crumb of the bread, I cubed it all up. I didn't get too picky about the size. Some are smaller, some are bigger, but they all taste good on salad, no matter the size. Now, do you have to make croutons with brioche? Of course not. It's a pretty expensive bread to use as croutons, but I've just discovered it's really yummy. So that's my current kick. You can make croutons with any bread you wanted and you can put any seasonings on you want. Um, this is just what I've been doing lately because we've been eating more salads because it's nice and warm here in Southern California now. So I'm going to show you what I've been doing. So of course there's a ton of butter already in this brioche, as you know, but that's okay. I'm adding more. <laughs> so I have my oven preheating to 375 convection. If you don't have convection, it's not a big deal. You just take a little longer. Um, I'm just going to drizzle, well, more than a drizzle, a pour this yummy melted and I use a really good quality um, Irish butter called Kerrygold. You can use any butter you want, but I would definitely use salted butter, not unsalted butter. So I'm gonna kind of distribute the butter a little bit with my hands. Grab my little paper towel. Oh, top oven's heated. And this, again, this is just my formula. You can use whatever seasonings, anything you want. This is what I like, Lowry Season Salt. Lowry's has always been a staple in my family. I make oven fried or, you know, baked, coated baked chicken with Lowry's on it. Um, next ingredient is just garlic powder, granulated garlic. And for at the table and special things, I use fresh grated Parmesan, or actually Parmigiano Reggiano, but for the croutons, the dry powder is perfect. And I'm just going to do that. Oops, got an errant one over there, not that it would hurt. And the next step is just putting it all in the oven. And I literally set the timer for every five minutes, get a big spatula, turn them, set the timer for another five minutes, get a spatula, turn them. And I do that until they are crispy. And by the way, there is a very fine line, as I found out one time, between almost there and burnt. <laughs> So make sure you really, toward the end, when they're starting to get just the tiniest bit of brown, don't leave the kitchen. Keep watching your croutons. Although I have to say that of the three of us that eat at my house on a regular basis, my husband, my dad, and I, my dad and I actually liked the burnt extra well done ones, my husband not so much. So they weren't ever thrown away. They just had a little extra well done flavor, but we liked them. So again, I'm just going to put these in the oven set the timer for five minutes and just keep turning, five minutes turn, five minutes turn. I don't know how long it takes, probably a good 20 minutes, but I don't remember. And I don't even know if I did 375 last time or if I used convection last time. So basically it's just a watch turn, watch turn until they're done. Then you'll know when they're done because you all know what croutons are supposed to look like. I'll show you what they look like at the end. I wanted to show you this humongous uh spatula i guess it's probably made for flipping pancakes but it turns a lot of croutons at one time so this is what i'm using the croutons are cooked i think i might have cooked them at a lower temperature the last couple times i used 375 convection and they got done super fast i really had to watch them carefully they are so good some of them are more crispy and crumbly, 
and some of them are just lightly crispy, but they are seasoned, at least for me, they're seasoned absolutely perfectly. So the hubby, is, the hubby cameraman is showing you the yummies. <laughs> and I just wanna talk a minute bit, another little bit about brioche and about croutons. The brioche recipe is really adaptable, but it's so yummy just baked as a loaf of bread, trust me. It also makes the most amazing hamburger buns. That's what my family really likes. Again, I think I, well, I think I told you earlier, you could put candy corn in them and it's like a cake, oh, it's so good. I know some people don't like candy corn, but if you do, so yummy. Chocolate chips, chocolate chips and candy corn. All kinds of things. You can do whatever you want. Be creative in your kitchen. That's what baking is about. As far as croutons go, you don't need to use brioche. In fact, it's a pretty expensive crouton to make. I just happen to like how they turn out. You can use any kind of bread that you have in your freezer. You can even use a mix of breads. I have done that too. I've thrown in extra challah, extra rye bread, old wheat, you know, wheat bread. Like if I had two or three pieces of this kind of bread and three or four pieces of that kind of bread and I want to clean out the freezer to make room for, you guessed it, more bread, then you can make croutons with any of it. It just happens right now that I made these two sacrificial brioches for the croutons because I had a request for brioche and because I like the brioche croutons. And also we had hamburgers last night and I wanted to make hamburger buns. So it was a win-win all the way around. So that's it for brioche and croutons. And you even got to see how I make turkey burgers. And by the way, I make hamburgers with ground beef the same exact way where I mix it up with egg, Lowry's, purple onion, seasoned um, breadcrumbs, and ketchup. So anyway, that's about it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to make a comment, please do. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, if you have questions for me where you want to see pictures of something, it's better to message me through Facebook, but because I can't insert pictures in reply to the comments on YouTube, or at least I can't figure out how. Thanks, guys. Oh, good. Thanks I'm glad watching. we're done. I cannot wait to try one of these. Get out of there. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs>